Hello interwebs, Lord Arcandos here. This is a tale of swords and deal. Nope, wait, sorry, wrong movie. Welcome to the character vote for my 500 subscribers special Let's Play. Now, I've had this idea for a while and uh, due to recently breaking the 500 subscriber mark, I decided to utilize it for my next Let's Play. Now, instead of the often seen vote for the next game to be played, I will present you with five different characters that I've created throughout the years for my role-playing needs, and you will get to vote for the character you'd most want to see me uh, use as the main star of my upcoming RPG Let's Play. The game, however, shall remain a mystery to the very end. Now, I will give... Um, general description of the characters even though I'm using Icewind Dale to uh, present the characters the uh, descriptions will be based on the 3.5 edition rules which I use to create my characters and um, things like the class base I will mention for each character are not uh, entirely accurate representations they are not final and they might not include all classes if a character is a multi-class one. And of course, the chosen character will also be uh, a bit more fleshed out for the setting and rules of the uh, game I will be playing, as well as, of course, all her skills and stuff. And I will also uh, describe some of the more noticeable aspects of their personalities. But anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go to uh, candidate number one, Zirael Dranak. Her uh, class base is Druid Ranger. Uh, her race is uh, Celadrin, or Keladrin, whichever it's supposed to be pronounced, which is a plain touch of Celestial and Elven blood. She is a dual wielder. She focuses pretty evenly on both melee combat and spells. She is uh, very fast and agile. Favors debuffing spells and some buff and healing spells. Her racial traits include gold-colored eyes, uh, high dexterity, which is of course the fast and agile part, and uh, high charisma, and also uh, low constitution. Now the part of her charisma comes from uh, the fact that she's, well, most people and of all you know, humanoid races consider her extremely beautiful. And she, of course, also abuses that to persuade people. Uh, her low constitution is mainly due to her skin and nervous system being very sensitive for unknown reasons, which results in a low pain threshold. She can't take much uh, hits before she goes into a coma. Uh, her alignment is neutral evil. She, she doesn't consider honor or principles or rules of sorts really necessary but she doesn't have a lust for carnage or chaos either uh, she's a good liar which of course is partially due to her looks <laughs> uh, so she has a high bluff skill and also high diplomacy due to pe being persuasive in a non-threatening or intimidating manner uh, she doesn't read Mainly if, sh whenever looting anything or stuff, she doesn't really touch books much at all. She likes to wander a bit in wilderness areas, but other than that she is not really a must-see all nooks and crannies of the world kind of type. Uh, this I mention also because this will affect the way I will be playing. It will affect the uh, how much I will explore and how thoroughly I will explore areas in a game. Uh, she hi holds family ties extreme in extremely high regard. She loves children and she absolutely hates people who don't appreciate family. This is due to her being abandoned as a baby. Uh, also, she hates class separation and snobby nobles. But uh, family ties are something that uh, basically go pretty much above anything else, almost. Uh, she isn't angered easily outside of insults or deeds that relate to uh, one's family. But when she is angered, she goes into this cold-blooded, almost emotionless trance-like state. And when that happens, she 
she is filled with lust for blood, pretty much. Uh, she also doesn't allow easily uh, breaking and entering into people's houses without an actual reason. Except if it's known to be a rich, snobby noble's house, or just someone who has pissed her off. Same goes uh, also for robbing and looting from uh, innocent townsfolk and poor people. She doesn't do that or like having uh, party members do that. She can't stand hypocrites or goody two-shoes either, so her party will never have a paladin or anything even remotely resembling that. Children she will help for free and always help. If uh, any children ever ask for her help. Same goes with uh, if someone, uh, someone would ask her to avenge for example death of a family member or something she will do it without even asking for a reward except if that um, employer is uh, a noble and she won't abuse uh, for example if people think she is someone else and offer her basically someone else's reward thinking that she's someone she's not she will correct them she will not uh, take someone else's <laughs> paycheck so to speak her uh, favorite weapons are kukris and uh, in case of those not being available short swords for ranged combat she sometimes uses darts that's pretty much it for her let's move to candidate number two luna winterim she is a tiefling and her class base is barbarian she prefers a two-handed weapon large one usually a scythe or a halberd or in the lack of those a two-handed axe she does sometimes use throwing axes for ranged combat but she's not proficient with them in any way and she just prefers to rush in her racial traits are small horns on the on her head completely white eyes and this general menacing aura of discomfort it causes discomfort to most people around her her alignment is chaotic evil. She pretty much does exactly what she wants and has a constant bloodlust. She loves to kill things, especially humans, whom she hates. Her high constitution is due to having a, a very high pain threshold. And she can tolerate uh, intense, very intense pain in bursts. Uh, and for unknown reasons, all but the largest of wounds on her seem to cauterize almost instantly, stopping the bleeding. So that allows her to survive better. Uh, she is quite perceptive, but she completely dismisses all common sense whatsoever most of the time, which results in her uh, lower wisdom. It would be higher if she didn't basically ignore all common sense. Physically, she's very strong, and uh, her dexterity is slightly above average. Uh, her very low charisma is due to her racial traits, and also intimidating behavior, almost bright red hair, and her very unconventional makeup. So, uh, her what little charisma she has is pretty much due to her willpower, <laughs> and not much else. Uh, she likes to explore inhabited areas and, well, basically any kinds of settlements, even if they are abandoned. In Wilderness, uh, she's kind of a, um, I guess, medium-level explorer. Uh, she does have an ADD side in that she gets sidetracked and goes off to explore places easily. If she spots something weird in the distance, for example, or hears about some odd stuff somewhere and as mentioned she hates humans with a passion she doesn't like to deal with them apart from when killing them and that is it for her our third candidate is Erin Sidarkin, a gold dwarf her base class base <laughs> is a cleric she favors a morning star or flail uh, depending it's the weapon with a spiky ball and a chain basically and also uh, she uses a large heavy shield, but not tower shields though. She also has an affinity for grenade-like grenade items, such as acid flasks and the like. In combat emphasis is pretty much uh, a bit more on the spell side, but also she does uh, put effort into uh, her melee combat training as well. 
She doesn't use ranged weapons outside of the grenade-like items. Well, spell emphasis is pretty much on buffing and healing. Her racial traits are low agility, and tanned skin, and being short. <laughs> Naturally, as a dwarf. Duh. Uh, her, her alignment is neutral evil. She pretty much just does what she thinks is right or necessary. That's it. Or, in some cases, what her deity wants. Her DT is still, well, I am undetermined on that, so some aspects that might come from that side are still also unfleshed out. <laughs> Can you even say that? I don't know. Anyway, low dexterity comes because, well, being a gold dwarf, she has a naturally low agility, and uh, she is a leader type. She listens to other members input and tries to consider everyone's opinions and wants pretty evenly when making decisions but also then related to the low dexterity and agility she's somewhat clumsy which is partially because she's always keeping an eye on others as a leader and also as a healer um, her charisma is slightly lower lowered I would say due to her being pretty ugly and not very persuasive though she is intimidating uh, she is highly perceptive and has lots of common sense, in addition to being a practiced divine spellcaster, which is the reason for her high wisdom. Uh, one thing about her that stands out is that she likes to do stuff like, for example, an, to accept a job from someone to recover some stolen property. For example, some knolls or something stole something from a farmer, let's say. She likes to accept that job go kill the gnolls, take the stuff, then go back to the farmer, the employer, only to show that, here, I got your stuff back, and then proceed to tell them that she's keeping that stuff, <laughs> instead of giving them to them. She also likes to blackmail and threaten people, except in the case if the those people are followers of the same deity. To uh, those people she will not usually blackmail or threaten in any way even if the gain would be um, lucrative. <laughs> and yeah, that is pretty much it for her. And then our fourth candidate, Yenak Dul Savirnak. She is a UNT pureblood, and the only racial trait she really has is a greenish tint in her skin from patches of scales, which are pretty faint though. So the tint is almost the only thing that actually reveals her having those scales. Outside of, of course, touching her skin. Her class base is rogue. She's an assassin type. Uh, she favors a one-handed weapon, which I am still a bit undecided on. Probably a scimitar, though. And for ranged combat, she uses a sling. And she also likes to fight dirty. Doity fighter. Uh, her alignment is lawful evil. She holds a person's word in very high regard, and she loathes people who break their promises. She considers principles and certain rules, personal rules, necessary and something that should definitely be kept to. Um, she excels with locks, however she sucks at pickpocketing, big time, and her stealth and trap handling skills are pretty average. She, well, she works as an assassin, but she's not exactly a great one. She's been good enough so far not to die in any job yet, but time will tell. Uh, she also has a high lore skill, which is uh, due to having a lot of knowledge of different kinds of artifacts and items and materials. This also means she has a very good appraise skill. A lot of the source of her knowledge is reading. She loves to read legends involving magical items and all sorts of things like that. And she randomly also reads other stuff sometimes. If there's any kind of hint that it might include any kind of info about possibly some some sorts of magical artifacts or the like. Uh, she's uh, very objective focused. She doesn't get sidetracked easily to do anything else if she's doing a job or something and she her exploration uh, 
needs are pretty much revolving only around the areas related to her current objective, whatever it is she's doing, scou basically scouting, for example, escape routes, stuff like that on the job. That is pretty much her exploration need, and that is pretty much it for her. And last but not least, our fifth candidate, Nagol Ur. She is a grey orc. Uh, her racial traits are pretty much dark grey hair and grey skin, not much else. Of course, uh, somewhat big size, but <laughs> that's kinda obvious, being an orc. Uh, her class base is a ranger. Her focus is uh, mainly on ranged combat. She is favoring a longbow and uses daggers as a backup weapon in case of an emergency. Her emphasis is greatly on weapon combat over spells and what little spells she uses they are mainly of the charm and paralyze type to help her basically disable or take command of uh, hostile creatures along with some healing spells. Her alignment is neutral evil that's because uh, she, most of her, uh, how would I put this, morals kind of are what usually are perceived as evil. However, it's basically if she had two mottos, they would be natural selection. And the second one would be whatever happens, happens. That is pretty much it. She's kind of a tough one to describe alignment wise I mean easily without going into insane amount of detail um, she's a heavy drinker she's al always at least slightly inebriated unless she's out of supplies she mainly drinks wine and spirits but if there's nothing else available then she will also settle with ale uh, she's extremely dexterous and has good survival and healing skills thanks mainly to years of living alone in the wild she is um, somewhat of a hermit nature and shy. She doesn't talk much. She uh, likes to explore somewhat in the wilderness, but uh, not in uh, inhabited areas, towns and the like. She doesn't like big cities at all. And uh, she prefers to visit so-called civilized areas only very briefly and to leave as soon as possible. And that is pretty much it. As you can see, um, some of the characters are a bit more fleshed out in general <laughs> than others at this point. However, of course, the character that uh, will get the most votes and chosen for uh, the Let's Play, I will flesh out more, way more, before starting the Let's Play. And because, of course, I will also have to adjust the character to the rules and settings of the set game. I hope you'll find these uh, five candidates interesting enough. I will give you till the rest of this week to vote. And we will find out next Monday which character will be starring in the next Let's Play. I hope you'll enjoy watching whichever character will win. And uh, thanks for watching this and thanks for voting. And see you next time.